This program is brought to you by the Zach Ross Foundation, a philanthropic organization with a focus on poverty, education, mental health, human rights, and cultural exchange. Hosted at the Brennan School of Business at Dominican University, we present to you a lecture series on international management. We hope you enjoy it. Hey, what you guys uh, think of Benjamin? <laughs> Real mom. Yeah, he's like really serious. Really modest. He has a really good sense of humor. Oh, I think he's uh, well, actually, both of us. Um, in 2018, we're going to run for the uh, United States Congress. So, my, the head of the high parks in my district is Bobby Rush. And he lives in Wicker Park. So, his district is a district six. So, we've been working with campaigners and stuff to kind of we're doing analysis ourselves in our city environment, you know, stuff that we talk about here in class, like do we have a chance to work with it, et cetera, et cetera. So. You said you're running? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, a little leeway in office, right? Well, maybe, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but Bobby Rush, um, you guys might even know who he is. He's been in office like 30 years, it's like 80 years old. How's he kicking out? How's he kicking out? Yeah. yeah. Time to go. You need some money. Simple as that. No, I'm pretty young, you know. I just met him. I made like 24 a couple years ago. So you give up your teaching career? Um, maybe. This keeps one by one. Okay. Um, Oh, that's the owl. That's the owl is the end of our last. Trust me, it serves its purpose. It's real life. Everybody works in the So I'm going to hand out a, a, an exercise about roots. You guys can get a group maybe to get them on roots. And Here's the markers. I'm going to get one of these easel pads for the groups. 
I'll hand back the uh, articles. So 
He did or she did? Well, he did. No, she was dead. I don't think she, she was a bad stand up. They didn't have a picture of somebody. Which makes me scared. I, I ride motorcycles. Oh, yeah. Or, you know, so I'm always looking at them. And Travis, you know, 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 you know
um, things like pollution. Um, recently, uh, oil refining businesses in uh, the United States or the earthquakes, I have words in them. So, uh, the U.S. has been experiencing late Florida or something like that. Uh, they've been fracking so much with shale uh, digging uh, that their state has experienced you know, uh, abnormal amount of earthquakes, and it's all because of the fracking they've been using. Um, so the land is becoming weak, so that's a ecological risk right there. Uh, another risk is personal injury. Um, uh, personnel. personnel injury, uh, working on oil rigs is, you know, obviously dangerous. Uh, ways to combat that is safety meetings, uh, you know, going over the risks with your employees. Uh, other things are fluctuating oil prices, global competition right now in Saudi Arabia. Uh, oil prices aren't at the high, and it's not, not the right business to be in because uh, Canada and the U.S. are growing so much. Um, and then just uh, the different business culture. And then uh, China, they're, uh, well, we were thinking about doing a cell phone manufacturing business. Uh, and something kind of like similar, I know iPhone, they hire out subcontractor to do their manufacturing so some of the risks involved with that is employee morale um, in China there's just a lot of unhappy employees uh, they, had jobs. Done, had all, they had all the suicides and they said just put on masks and pets, pets for workers um, and yeah time management uh, they're always under um, they always have to try to get out their product before competition so like Samsung and whatnot um, then, yeah, global competition, international laws and regulations, and uh, cultural differences as far as child labor laws and um, what they do and don't allow. Uh, ways to get around that is what can be done. Um, in both cases, Saudi Arabia and China would hire uh, people that have experience working in both those international countries and in the U.S. so that they are so that they know the cultural differences and the laws and everything involved. Okay. Interesting. Um, yeah, oil, oil is an interesting <coughs> thing. A lot, of countries, a lot of countries are becoming more oil independent. So they've been doing fracking here in the United States, offshore drilling in Canada. Uh, fracking is causing earthquakes. It's also private land rights uh, issues. So now I think the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court has said that um, this oil company could go straight through Native American land. I think Obama wrote in an executive order to stop them from doing that. So there's like this whole thing about of saying, can you go through private land uh, in order to continue to do this search for oil? Couldn't they do something like in that domain to take the land and take Well, see, Native American land. That's a different thing. Yeah, just as the United Nations headquarters in New York. Mm -hmm. That's not part of the United States. <laughs> so you can send the military in there. You can do anything. You can send the police, you can send the military. Well, you could, but it would be. And you could, but it would be against international law. So just like the UN headquarters in New York is in the middle of Manhattan. Uh, that's an international body. This is really this home entity. No, 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 no. I think that was gifted. The in New York is gifted by the Rockefeller Foundation. So the Rockefeller Foundation. Yeah. So you know, Rockefeller is essentially created the United Nations. So yeah, you want to see interesting stuff like that. And in China, yeah, um, most people live. They have housing within the premises where you work. So you never leave the job. That's what you do. You work 15 hours a day. So you allow people to commit suicide. Uh, so every time you guys technology, I mean, uh, I mean they, the risk is kind of the same in the foreign country. There's real risk of the loss of businesses, languages, uh, the lack of test and knowledge. There's not a big gain on this to be I mean, test and knowledge, you can't really. You want to try as you get yourself from that culture and study it all. Um, for India's education, 
issues with supply chain, how do you get your product in and out? Uh, what's the difference is now it's just email, how some of the we're reading out there, more mail, more emails. Uh, this corruption, more responsibility. And this is reading into now, and this is now that we know prior to before the news is there. Alright, uh, so this exercise was just to kind of give you guys a head start into the CBRA project that you're going to do towards the end of the class, um, cost benefit risk analysis. And so now I think we should maybe start selecting groups. So we have 20 people in here, I think we're going to do five groups, and the groups of four. You guys want to do groups of four or groups of five? Doesn't matter. <laughs> we'll do um, two groups of four. Yeah, so five groups, groups of four, you guys can pick. Um, here is a think of it's a sign sheet. And then I'll go over what this is going to be in the presentation and also in the paper. So not on the notes. <coughs> no, by looking at this, you guys can select the groups. Who do you want to be to work with? Mm -hmm.
you guys are just going to check your own, check your own countries that you want to come to bring them to analyze. Um, so from here, you're going to look at the demographics. What are the demographics? <coughs> What is the made up of uh, yeah, ethnic demographics, uh, income demographics, gender demographics? The next is just maybe a brief summary of the history of the country, kind of how it's getting to where it is now. We can't cover thousands of years of history, so just summarize, make it brief, just kind of the, the main concepts of, of how things have gotten to where they are now. The next is government and politics. What form of government is there? What are some of the risks with this government in place? And is there any corruption? This will work primarily from Use this, the CIA World Factbook. Or you can just go online to the CIA's website. Something like this. You can also incorporate a little bit of the uh, World Factbook into this. But here for corruption, you really want to know. The perception of corruption. So, corruption perception index. Where does this country that you pick, where does it fall? Next, you're going to look at the economic structure of the company. Of the country. You're going to look at what industries are prominent there. You're going to look at privatization. You're going to look at some of the tax implementations, things dealing directly with income, like GDP. You're going to look to see if there's any social welfare programs. <clears throat> Dealing with employment, you can look at unions, if they have any. You'll look at trade agreements, NAFTA, Trans Pacific, things of that nature. Investment. 
there's an index for this for foreign uh, for FDI. I'll give a little bit of to see how susceptible people are to investing. I think I may shorten the length of the paper you need to turn in. On there, I have pretty much for each category about five pages each. That may be a little long for you guys. Um, <clears throat> Or do you not think it's too long? That's kind of long. How long is it? It's too far. I don't think it's too far. So 20 pages is tough. It's not. 20 pages is very Yeah, I'll give you guys a few minutes. Um, <laughs> what was that? Yeah, I, I see a range between, let's say between 12 and 15 pages per group. So it's really just three pages. Three pages per person. You're still not doing the line and that's not true. We're talking about everything. Everything. Culture. Everything. Yeah. It's about the letter of the government, the public system, the risk system, the risk system, the health system. The risk system. The health system. Yeah. The letter of the <laughs> and then, I mean, that's really, you can get most of the information on the top. Looking at politics, economics, legal, technological things, 80% of your paper. What about the other 12%? That deals with risk. So, how do you know? The rest is how you guys perceive the risk. Is it worth it or not? How great is it? If you're going to analyze that risk using most of these indices, so you know, CIA World Bank, uh, foreign arrest investment indices, corruption perception, um, there's a few more too. There's uh, index of economic freedom. How restricted is economic freedom? Do they even allow people to operate and, and make as much money without some? So, um, so is it T same or uh, technological? And basically, they have infrastructure already placed and a whole bunch of budget that you allocate to. Can they use it? How much can it cost to train people? Are those options? Uh, next is external environment. So you look at class systems. <laughs> Maybe how large is the middle class? What's the standard of living? Kind of goes to group one, I talked about they wanted to be fair and what they pay people. And the court is also standard. Um, divisions in ethnicity. So you see right over here, right? ethnic disparities. Religious implications. Languages. Is the country literate and how much so? So the letters for literacy. You 
get out and see that as well as that. Uh, maybe I have some unique features that you have identified with the culture. And last for starting off helps this cultural dimensions. You can add that. And I'll go over a little bit of that too after this. All of this deals with the countries. External processes has not been good enough to do with the business, but this is just working on the outside. Uh, next, you'll look at internal environment. This one might be a little challenging. So in the country, you're going to look at some of the organization, organizational characteristics. You look at how a similar company uh, operates. What is their internal culture? <coughs> Next is motivation. And incentives. What do companies in that country use to motivate employees? What kind of benefits they offer? Next is leadership style. How do they make decisions here? And how do they communicate? What are some of the issues that you may face with your communication style? What are some of the challenges you observe during this process? Um, risk. Is it worth doing business here? And things you learn along the way. So yeah, we'll do a range of 12 to 15 pages. Everyone will get a chance to talk in the presentation. Try to divide the work up as equally as possible. Or another one prior, prior to the Any questions? Um, so the 12 to 15 pages that's due, like, 
almost the last class. So. Yeah. And then the other um, updates, those are just brief little. Yeah, just progress reports. Let me know how things are going, how far along. Do you have any questions? You know, is there anything I can assist you guys in? <coughs> Yeah, so on so this, I have a few presentations for, so they begin November 10th. And they go all the way to the 8th of December. So we'll break them up. So, has anyone still had a chance to check out the offset? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You've had a chance to any questions about it? There's also a good read by uh, Thomas Friedman uh, called The World's Flat. It talks about globalization. Um, it's a pretty good read. It's about 300 pages. But maybe you guys could take a glance at uh, a summary of it and we'll talk about that next class. Uh, it's called The World's Flat. And also, the next class. Maybe we can discuss this kind of updates, or global updates, like what's going on around the world. Uh, what are some of the challenges that managers are facing? Um, that just be a verbal discussion. So getting back to, I was going to psychology. This is this primarily psychological. It's heavily psychological. And the rest of science don't really matter. So this is what makes uh, Homestead so important when doing business around the world or across the country. So we went over the first two. The third one This third dimension is collectivist and individual societies. Why do we think this is important in international science? It's really important to you know how people perceive things and how they work because when you talk about individuals, you know, countries just like America, people they don't really like you know work as an group. Everybody works as themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you know, as a manager, you, you should really you know that uh, you know you should just know how important it is. You know how people perceive things. And, you know, yeah, absolutely. So the people we can work together. Like we talked with Japan, how they um, they kind of moving more towards an individualist society. People stop having kids, uh, so now everything represents them as a person, as opposed to a family, a larger community, a larger group, or just a national identity. Whereas before, Toyota. Honda, those things are so <coughs> successful because all the work done in those countries is with the national identity in mind. It's not about you, it's about the overall scheme of the country. So we can see well, we'll see what happens with that. <coughs> so on individualist societies. 
So what happens is everybody takes care of even themselves. Or their families. This is critical because you look at societies like that, and then there's very low charitable work, humanitarian work. There's very low uh, programs initiated by companies to actually help societies or help the poor in those societies. Um, so that obviously can <coughs> change your tactics and your strategy on how you do business. So for here, you wouldn't give people in the pharmaceutical industry free cheap drugs. Uh, or give them way to cheap drugs to bring money back like in. Same being public property. In individualist societies, you have the right of privacy. We can kind of see that now here in the United States. Um, when we kind of go through a conundrum of saying, well, do we want to be extremely protected or do we want to be extremely private? If there is terrorist activities, do we want the government monitoring the internet? monitoring their phones, or do we want to live in a world where everything's uncertain and a terrorist attack can happen everywhere? Do we give authority to the police, or do we take the authority down? So I think we're kind of in the shuffle of both right now. And here, personal opinion is expected. This is kind of a one person, one vote type of deal. I mean, clearly, you use social media to observe these sorts of uh, activities in the United States. Right? Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion. So, uh, but then I also think is what I have observed on social media is. <clears throat> Now we live in a society where supposedly you can't judge others. Um, which is intriguing to me. You, you can't say you don't like that genre of music. You know, you just keep quiet. You can't have an opinion. Or you're saying kind of like, oh, you know, you're hating on, on this or that. So I find that very interesting that we're going through that phase right now. So here, the purpose of education is learning how to learn. As opposed to learning how to do things. Just more of an exploratory concept to where everybody has a creative mind, everybody formulates what they want to be in life, and people move to that regard. Whereas over here at the left of this, I'll just have to hear This is learning how to do. So in that society, you learn how to do a job. You learn how to pick up a trade. And you do this stuff uh, to support the social systems that have already been in place, the historical systems that have been in place. You're not going to have too much freedom of expression. This is all about expression. So now you see places like China and then Japan kind of go through learning how to do, now it's like learning how to express. They've adapted other cultural 
beliefs, the fashion has changed, the mindsets have changed, people want better wages, people want a bigger house. It's no longer about, you know, this national support, it's more about how you're gonna take care of myself. So, here your tasks prevail over relationships. <laughs> you create relationships with people in order to further your agenda. So, you utilize people to achieve an outcome. You probably said that relates to the day, like the day they were talking about. What is like learning how to do what? Uh, learning how to do a task, learning how to do a job, do a trade, do one specific thing. So there you kind of suppress your creative mind and stick more to a functionality. Is it functional? Will it bring in money? Will it help the family? That is it. And over here, Ted, um, look at this relationship to prevail for the tax. A lot of places around the world, that's how people do business. It starts off with eating together, drinking tea, drinking coffee, talking, getting to know one another, what you like, what you dislike, share uh, cultural exchange, um, become fascinated with one another. And then it goes into this. A lot of times when you do business, they stop with this relationship. Here in relation, so here, say we in the United States, individualistic society, um, doesn't work that way. Work the business is an economy. The money is green. If you ever work with us, we do business. So here, there is a high stress on belonging. People want to be part of something. They want to belong. Here, not so much. Here, everybody wants to be a leader. Here, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Nobody wants to work for a company. They want to start their own thing. They all need to belong. And collectivism. <coughs> Harmony should always be maintained. People would immediately shut down things that are going to rile up the societies and spur everybody apart. I mean, you can see a little bit of maybe here with that political, um, that current political environment. So where we're not harmonious, but now everybody's getting divided. Everybody's trying to come back up to say, oh yeah, you know, we're all different. Don't forget we're all different, we're all different. So here, others are classified as in-group or out-group. Mm -hmm. 
do I do more business with somebody who's the same religious, who has the same religious beliefs as I do, who speaks the same religion, uh, same language, who likes the same things? Or do I always separate them and call them others and find ways to do that? So going back to opinions here, opinions and poets. Let's just say <coughs> opinions are predetermined by the groups. So your opinion is really consensus. Consensus based. And I think we'll wrap it up there. This presentation was brought to you by the Zach Ross Foundation, a global philanthropic organization focusing on poverty, education, and mental health. We hope you've enjoyed.